overcome. I am overcome. I am rid of any and all crutches that no longer serve. I am rid of any and all crutches that no longer serve. God wills this. God wills this. And ready? You take this in. Ah, and vibrate, just vibrate. I am free. I am free. I am free. I am free. Mm, beautiful. And just take these words in. Feel them, know them to be true. The time has come. The time has come and it has arrived. And the good news is, is that you had an appointment and you've arrived at the appointment, which is being here today. It takes something to be here, to look at your stuff and to have big willingness. I like to say big willingness. The Course of Miracles, it says, all you need is a little bit of willingness and miracles happen. I say big, huge willingness. <laughs> Why? Because this world of duality and separation, there's so many things that manifest in our realm, you know, such as what happened here at the church. There's always these sort of problems that come in, right? And that's why we have such an amazing board here is to, to help us. But at the end of the day, it's very important to know that it's not so much that there's problems. The Course in Miracles talks about this. It's that we have a perceptual problem. That's the problem is a perception. Is how are you seeing these problems? So when I am seeing everyone that comes up here, I, I experience your big willingness to have true perception to see things in another light. I like to say, put on Holy Spirit's glasses and let's get to work. And instead of dwelling on this problem, we have the strength in God to move through it and do the best we can and serve. And I really feel that here at this church. So for me as a speaker, it's an honor to be part of this community because this is a collective effort. You know how they say, I have a nine month old now and you know, it takes a village to you know, raise a child. Well, I say it takes a village to have a church, right? So I feel like us in community really make a difference. And I just want to acknowledge every single one of you that show up for the church, but not only that, show up for yourself. Show up for yourself because you can't help anybody if you're not taking care of, of yourself. Um, and boy, have I learned that being a mother, you know, I have learned to um, really um, have the strength and start to get connected more to God. Because if, if I have my strength in my limited self, in my egoic self, um, I just want to do, do, do. And I don't want to take care of me. And I have found this balance of like this week, I went to acupuncture twice. <laughs> On Friday, I went to a two hour meditation, two hour meditation up at the shrine. Um, um, Yogananda's place, two hours in silence. I take care of myself. The time has come. We have to be loving with ourselves. We can't experience the strength of God if we're not being gentle and loving. We're in this world that we just want to do, do, do. We're constantly doing. We're constantly focused on problems. We're constantly focused on the outside world, which is nothing wrong because we need to attend to these things. But I invite you to start to have time to meditate. You know, meditation, I was leading the meditation this morning. I invite you guys to come early and join us in meditation. You're going to be here anyways, right? Come a little early. It's like, it's like an antibiotic. It's like an antibiotic. If you write, if you watch the Netflix movie Heal, I invite you to watch it. It talks about how meditation literally heals your body. It heals your cells. Not only that, it, it, it heals your mind of where you start to just have an overall better well-being. So now when I do meditation, I'm like, wow, this is medicine. This is like taking a prescription, but I don't have to take one. This is, I don't have to spend money. I don't have to put any, anything in my body, a pill. I could just have this free moment, free, right? Of just going within and being with God. So I invite you now to take a look at where you're putting your strength. Where, are, where do you have that crutch of where you are leaning onto something that no longer serves? I feel that one of the biggest things we lean on is on our little self, our little self with a, with a little S, not the big S, our true self, our little self of where we lean into what we call the egoic mind. We, le we lean into negative thoughts. So what happens is that when we lean into that, we start to lean into form things that no longer serves. That could be food, 
you lean into food. You have a crutch on food. You have a crutch on, um, it could be alcohol. You have a crutch on drugs. You can have a crutch on a, a relationship that you lean on to this person. Or you have a crutch onto this person. And what Unity Principles is teaching us and what Unity is teaching us is that it's very vital and important to start, start to lean into God more. Lean more into your true self more. To lean more into your truth, your vastness, your expansiveness, your divinity. To lean more into that. What happens is, is the big deal is, right, that what you're going to have to do, you can't lean into anything or your true self until you start to let go. You start to let go. You have to start to let go of that crutch. And you can't move forward until you let go of that crutch. It's like you can't be like, I want to be the light of the world, but your crutch is like, oh, I'm little, right? Or I'm not enough. Right? So I have this crutch and I'm not enough, so how can I be the light of the world if I'm too busy thinking that I am separate? And I am little and I'm small and I'm not enough. Right? So you want to think about what is that crutch for you? And, and Jesus was really good at that. He was good at seeing people in their truth and having them let go of those crutches, of that crutch of like you believe that you're blind. Hell, listen, I'm going to show you. I could heal you. And you're going to be able to see again. Oh, you can't walk here. You're going to be able to walk on water, right? So he was such a visionary of seeing your, the truth. And unity teaches us that we can be the full expression of the Christ. So the time has come. Now, the problem is, and this is why, this is when I'm teaching now, I really show up last Sunday. I was at Unity of, of Barbara, you know, Unity of Santa Barbara, and I really let them have it in a good way. <laughs> but I was like, listen, people, we got to start living this stuff. We're coming to church, we're doing the courses, the Course of Miracles, we're doing the book clubs, you know, we're kumbaya, whatever it is, right? You're doing all these things in form, and then why is your life not functioning at a 10? Why is it not working to its max full capacity? Why? Because it's like, I am love, but then during the week, I'm going to look for my love outside of myself. So there's like this disconnection. Oh, I'm a comedian today, huh? There's this connection of where you need to live it fully. And that is when we need to no longer make compromises or exceptions. You got to stop to have that crutch in your little self and stop to have that crutch on the egoic self that holds you back from your greatness, that holds you back to your vastness. The thing is, it gets very uncomfortable to let go of that crutch because it's very, it gets, it's comfortable to hang on there, isn't it? Just imagine yourself on a crutch, you're like, oh, this is so comfortable here. I don't have to do anything but wallow in my misery and be a victim of the world that I see. You know, it's so unconscious. But listen, one of the things you need to do is start to get really radical, honest with yourself, radically honest, and say things as they are. You know what? I still want to hold on to a grievance here. I still don't want to forgive here. And you need to start to get really honest with yourself of what you're compromising and what exceptions you're making, right? So you got to look at that and that takes something and it's not bad. It's not good. It's just like you're going to finally heal because the only way you're going to heal is when you start to get really honest because when you start to get honest, then you start to take actions and you start to value the good stuff, right? I, in my life had to get really, really honest that I didn't want to change in a lot of ways. There was back in the day where I really wanted to, you know, be a mother and, exp and, and experience being a mother in this lifetime. I really wanted to um, be in a partnership with someone that I could enjoy my ministry with, right? Um, and I, I wasn't experiencing that in my world. Quite honestly, I was single for such a long time. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to have to go get a sperm donor or something, right? It was like, it was like I didn't think it was even going to remotely happen to me. Right? So what happens is, is that one day I'm in meditation and I'm praying to spirit and I'm spirit. I really want to experience a romantic relationship in my life. I want to be a mother in this lifetime. And I invited spirit in. That's another way that we gain strength in God is by asking for help because we can't do it alone. Listen, if we're doing it alone, your egoic self, your separated self, if you're doing it alone, you have every right to be nervous and every right to be depressed and in shambles. But if you're doing it with spirit, your spirit's got your back. Fight spirit in. 
Spirit, I really would desire this and I want to change. I want to be the love of my life. I want to affirm and be the affirmations that I'm, I'm chanting at Unity. I want to be the principles and the teachings of the Course. And you know what Spirit so lovingly, so honestly, so humbly said to me, said to me, no, you're not ready. I was like, what? <laughs> Seriously, that was like the best gift I've ever given myself because your, your, your Holy Spirit self is just you. My true self speaking to me was like, no, you're not. I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> you know, um, at the time I was already starting to speak. I was, it was very, very new in my career. And I was like, but what do you mean? I'm, you know, I'm speaking on Sundays and, and I'm doing the work. And, you know, I have, you know, I'm facilitating these ministers. And, you know, I pray, I meditate. You know, I, what do you mean I don't want this? It was the most beautiful thing because it was like, there was, there's still something that we want to hang on to. And it's so unconscious because you're like, I really want to change. I really want that change. But there's this little blind spot of this little thing that you're still willing to compromise and make exceptions. There's still that little crutch. Are your bells ringing right now? Is the light switch coming on? Because this is big. This is like the spiritual Olympics here. Hang on, guys. The time has come. The only way that you're going to reach the kingdom of heaven, the only way that you're going to live in this experience of the world and your vastness and your fullness is you got to get really honest with yourself and say, this is where I'm still compromising. This is where I'm still making an exception. How many of you feel like you're living an optimal life out of 10? What if you would just turn yourself up? Just turn it up all the way. What does that look like? woo Holy moly. It's like you, t you turn yourself up out of 10. If you hire the volume, you pump up the volume. There's this amazing dance song that I used to dance with. Pump up the volume, pump up the volume, pump up the volume. Dance, dance. <laughs> Look, Linda knows it. <laughs> it's an oldie, but it's a good one. Yeah. And it's like you, you want to, what, what would your world look like if you would pump up the volume? Like just literally turn yourself on and not hold, a not hold those crutches anymore. And you turn yourself on by leaning into God more and asking your inner guidance to help you. But first you gotta get really honest because Holy Spirit's waiting for you on the sidelines behind the tree. You know, I always say he's waiting for you to remember who you are because while you're in your delusion and believing all this nonsense, there's no space. Peace first, peace first. And then spirit comes in. So I invite you to look at your life and see where is it that you're compromising. You say you want this magnificent life, but you're still not forgiving somebody in your life. Who are you still holding a grudge against? Who are you still believing when they told you you weren't good enough? Are you still believing that, that what the doctor told you, that some cells in your body aren't working? I'm not sure. How about you remember you have other cells in your body that are working perfectly well? How about that? Time has come is what are you believing? What are you valuing? Where are you placing your value? I invite you to start placing your value on your true self in God. Start valuing thoughts that are aligned to truth. But not only that, start putting value on the things in your life and in your world that enhance your beauty, that enhance your essence, that enhance the kingdom of God within you. But you must get honest with yourself. Where are you compromising? Where are you making exceptions? Where are you not forgiving? Where are you still holding a grievance? Where are you still fearful? You got to look at it straight in the face. And that's when you usually have the dark night of the soul. And it's actually a good, good place to be because finally you're going to get to work. It's when you break down and when you really are honest with yourself. I always say you got to feel it to heal it, guys. You got to feel it. You got to feel it, feel it, feel it. And it gets really, really uncomfortable. But then you start to really live rather than die. Because when you're living in a world of not being completely honest and you're just like waking up, transed out, it's like death. It's not like you're physically dead, but you're dead because you're not, you're not experiencing the beauty of, at all of walking in here and having connections with people and having no barriers of where you get to show your brother and sister how beautiful it is to live a life that's fully self-expressed in God. And you're doing the service for yourself, but also for others. You know, being a minister and serving God doesn't look like just me st sitting up, standing up here and speaking. It looks different for each and every one of us of how you're going to serve God. And you, the job is just as important as my job because we're all in this together. I'm just showing up, just reminding you of you, what you already know. Don't you already know this? Just reminding you, ding, ding, ding. Right? The time has come. 
time has come. So to wrap it up here, I, I always like to live, um, leave everyone with practical things to, to be able to move this through your life. So if, he's like, yeah, 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 give it to me, give it to me. <laughs> no, no, you got it. So if you want to experience strength in your life fully in God and you want to let go of those crutches, you want to start to do an inventory of where, where are you not showing up in your life. Like you want to start to do an inventory on what are you, where are you compromising? Where are you making exceptions in your life? So you start to do that. You start to get really honest with yourself. And then second step is you start to have willingness to change that. Because the only way you're gonna change that is like you really, really want to. Remember Spirit told me I didn't want to. But I had to get really honest that I didn't want to. And okay, finally, now I'm ready, all right? Big willingness. The third step is, you know, and of course the Miracles talks about this and um, Unity talks about this in affirmative prayer. It's like you give it over. You give it over to Spirit and say, Spirit, listen, I want to live the life of my dreams. I want to live my life as a 10. I want to turn myself up. Help me because I can't do it by myself. Actually, when I do it by myself, I, make, I mess it up. I need your help. I know sometimes people feel like you've got to talk to Spirit in whispers or, you know, just get real. And Spirit, you know, it's not going to be like, Kumbaya, hallelujah. No, it's like literally sometimes Spirit speaks to me like literally told me, no, you're, no, you're not ready. Right? So you got to invite your inner wisdom, whatever that is for you. Maybe it's even a feeling. Maybe you don't hear anything, but maybe you feel something. You feel vibrational change. You got to ask for help. So the first step is, is to get what? Radically honest. <laughs> get really honest with yourself. Where are you compromising? Where are you making exceptions? And second is to have big willingness and to do the work. And I have a little tip for you, even if you don't want to. Even if you don't want to do it. You know, do you think that sometimes like I want to meditate or I want to sit in meditation for two hours or, or, you know, sometimes like things that I've done have healed my past, you know, heal my inner child, heal relationships with men that I've had in the past so I can experience the relationship I have now. It wasn't fun to go back in time and heal these relationships. It's not fun. But you know what? I did the work because I wanted to claim the life that unity teaches me that I can have. The time has come. So first step is responsibility getting really real, getting really honest. Second step is having big willingness. And the third is giving it over. You give it over fully to spirit. You get your hand out of it, you know? If you wanna stick your hand in it, you hit your hand. Stop it. You gotta stop yourself. You gotta stop it. All right, everyone, let's go within as we affirm this and we pray together. If we have a little melody here, a little bit of melody here for the prayer. Let's close our eyes as we do this powerful prayer of igniting this intention and this truth talk that I just gave of really living this fully in our lives. We bring it in together as a group. There's something that happens collectively in a room with awakened people or people that want to awaken. So I want to take this moment to, let's take a deep breath here. <sighs> Thank you, God, for this moment in time of where we get to awaken more to the truth of who we are in you. This morning we claim our strength in you, God, and we let go of the crutches that no longer serve. We let them go fully and we start to lean in on you, God. We start to lean in more into our true self. We start to lean more into love, lean more into Light, lean more into grace. Lean more into confidence, true confidence in love. Lean more into honesty, radical honesty. Lean more into introspection. Lean more into meditation. Lean more into perfect health. Lean more into truth. Lean more into peace. Lean more into the light. Lean more into what is. That I am, that I am. Thank you, God, for the healing that's taking place at this moment as we collectively affirm that we are released of what no longer serves and invite you into our hearts so you may show us the way. We're so willing. I invite you now to open your eyes and to just expand your arms as a symbol of inviting God into your heart and spirit into your heart. And you know that the Christ consciousness is filling your mind now with truthful thoughts, 
truthful actions and truthful existence. So I invite you now to put your hand on your heart as we all affirm, I am love, I am love. and I am willing. I let go of my crutches now that no longer serve. And I walk forward in faith and confidence in full expression. And I walk forward in faith and confidence in full expression. In God as God. In God as God. Amen. Amen. Thank you everyone. Namaste.